Well, hello, people. Hello, hello. Welcome to Between Two Nerds. Between us today is a very special friend of ours, Andrea Renee. Hello, everybody. Hello. What's and going on? What's up, guys? Fun fact, we you sat in to film in our trailer video, like <laughs> what this show looked like, and I we weren't did. actually even we weren't actually even we didn't even know the show, what the show we're was. Just, yeah. we're just like, oh, it's gonna happen. There's we're gonna like, be mics and stuff. Yeah. And then we're like, you want to be in this? And then you're like, yeah. So sure, now, why not? You were finally here. What's going on? Well, um, it's been a very busy year, and we're ramping up for Next Gen launch, which mm -hmm. begins with PlayStation Four next week, and then we have Xbox One the week after. So, did you did you pre-order yours like a smart person? Yes. Yeah. I did. Okay. Cool. Just, <laughs> just, we did not. We just gotta when, let it go. When did you When did you think to? I, we just didn't even think about it this time. When did I, you? I pre-ordered my Xbox One from the Microsoft Store about two months ago. Jesus. Um, but. There are a couple outlets that will periodically refill their inventory. Like Walmart just made an announcement that you can still purchase Xbox One and PS4 from Walmart. There we go. But, yeah, you got to go camp out at Walmart. <clears throat> but you have to go. You, you can buy them online. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, well, well, that I, I, had, our I actually problem. had made plans. Had an elaborate plan on to how like <laughs> to just go. Off it involved night. punching a child, like then stealing it. I don't know if they're gonna actually have retail versions available. Oh, I guess oh. they would have to, right? Yeah. yeah. Is, well, that, is that still how most you guys should go businesses wait, you done guys in this should world? Go is wait in line and, but don't punch a child. That would, that would the last, oh, oh man. That would last, make for such good footage. <clears throat> the end. the last time cool. I had to wait in line was for the Xbox. I got screwed over by GameStop yeah, for the Xbox 360 that. where they I had pre-ordered it, but they didn't tell me that they took way too many pre-orders for actual Xboxes they were getting. So I went and I called them before and I'm like, hey, you guys having a midnight thing? I'm like, yeah, totally, come on down. And I get there, I'm like, hey, just here to get my Xbox 360 that I've already paid for and really excited for. And I'm like, what's your name? Oh, okay. Flip one page. Flip two pages. Like, four pages later, yeah, you're not getting one tonight. So then <laughs> I spend all the rest of that night till 6 a.m. driving to every place. It was actually in, like, oh my God, yeah. I'd be so in this pissed. area. Yeah, I went all over. The final stop was at, I think it was Walmart. Um, and they were handing out, essentially, you had, like, a lottery to oh, be able man. to buy one. And there were like there were a lot no of good. mothers and grandmothers there buying it, and I just wanted to just like be like, I want this for me. I yeah, want this because, more than you because this I'm Xbox is going directly to me and not to someone to someone else. Do I get it? No. Little Timmy can have a terrible Christmas. I, almost, I need it now. I almost <laughs> bought an arcade like the non hard drive versions because mm -hmm. I wanted it so badly, but man. And you know what? That's what. This and eight years later, here we go again. Doing it again. Yay! It. Mm -hmm. We've learned so much. Yeah. And we just we just plum forgot. Yeah, just you know. You, I mean, there's lots of people out there that forgot, but I have to say, there isn't a really like compelling reason you absolutely must have one on day one. I will say that confidently. I am glad. I would agree my, with that. Yeah. I'm glad that my Xbox One is coming right away, but PlayStation Four, unless you are a die-hard Killzone fan, you can wait until like February, March next year to get that mm -hmm. when Infamous Second Son comes out. And next year's PlayStation exclusives are going to be better. I mean, we have the Order 1886, which looks really cool. Yeah. And, um, you know, Naughty Dog has an untitled thing that they're working on, which I'm hoping they're going to announce at the Video Game Awards this year. It's but totally not Uncharted. I, I don't know. love how much you know about release dates and things, because yeah. usually we're the ones that know. Yeah. Everything else like, oh, really? Is that what's coming out? Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. We've, we've had, like, every Killzone game. Yeah. It's not a system seller for me. I do enjoy them. We like playing them, yeah. I basically just want to get the PS4 a lot of kills just too. to have it early. Right. Um, we got to watch our Netflix and our Hulu and our yeah. Amazon video. You can't do that on any smart But this TV. is so next but gen. It's, it's oh, next man. gen. <laughs> have, they, have they announced that they're gonna, if they're going to have touch controls for Netflix? <laughs> you mean like this is on the thing that gets us excited. Vita? Those already exist. Oh no! Thank I'm not going to watch. I'm not going to watch. It's like like 3DS has it too. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not going to watch Netflix like that. Well, there are there are I'm certain, an adult. Well, there are certain apps that you can use your remote as, or excuse me, your smartphone as a remote. Yeah. Uh, for example, the DirecTV app. Uh, you, if you download it onto your phone, you can use it as a remote control with your television. That would be so much better than our terrible remote that we actually use. It is a terrible remote. It's yeah. the future. Touch screen remotes. Have you have you, yeah. you've, you've played the PS4 and everything, right? Yes. What do you think? Do you love the PS4 remote as much as I do? The DualShock 4, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. I. Like it better than DualShock Three, uh -oh. so I'll, I'll throw that out there right away. Uh, but I, fired. I have always been more of a fan of the Xbox controller than the PlayStation controller. 
Which is ironic because like the, as a woman, I have smaller hands than most men, and I know a lot of men don't I like... small hands, too. You do. You <laughs> hands. Most men don't like Sorry, the dual shock because it's small and it's harder to hold on to. Yeah. Um, but I think that what they've done, the improvements they've done, are fantastic. It's much better than dual shock 3. Yeah. The touchpad is it's nice. It still feels a little gimmicky to me. I haven't really seen anybody use the touchpad in a meaningful way. It still mm-hmm. feels like an afterthought, but it's also the beginning of this generation. Yeah. We have a long way to go into the generation to see what developers can really do with things and mm-hmm. um, I'm looking forward to seeing what they're going to do. So, I'm excited. Yeah. I really like the DualShock 4 controller. It's always like symmetry has always been like a thing for me and I don't know just like it's not like any harder to use but when I just prefer having them both at the bottom. Yeah. I, I, th- I, I feel like my thumbs just reach better yeah. there than having them up I, there. I do, I do like for getting to really specific. For like shooters like first person shooters I do like the offset of the Xbox but for every other kind of gaming I mm-hmm. feel like the the DualShock controllers just fit everything else, mm-hmm. well, especially made, like platforms. I love the, oh, yeah. The I agree. I think that they did significant improvements in the triggers and the uh, shoulder buttons. Yeah. Which to me was one of the major hangups I had about DualShock Three. I hated the triggers in uh, on that controller, and they are much nicer now and it's much more comfortable. And they concave the, th- uh, the thumbsticks. Which mm-hmm. was a big thing for me too, because on DualShock Three, my fingers always would slip off. So of you the like sticks. the concave, huh? Yeah, I do. It's more because it, it feels like then it's more of a pull motion versus a push push motion mm. for a, yeah, for the PS Three, I guess. Yeah, so I don't know. Well, I cool. Like, All right, I like a lot of. Tell us about stuff. you. What are you working on? <laughs> what's in the pipeline? What's coming up? What's going on? Well, sure. So I work for the Escapist, which you guys know. We work here in the same office. Mm-hmm. Um, we do a lot of gaming coverage. We do culture stuff. We do feature pieces. Um, I primarily do daily news. I have my show, Escapist News Now, which you guys can watch on our YouTube channel. Um, and I also do event coverage and preview coverage. So mm-hmm. I'm glad that this year is pretty much over as far as conventions go because it was a really busy season this year, but it was really fun. But I'm looking forward to CES, which is coming up in January, oh, yeah. the Consumer wow. Electronics Show. Hopefully I get to try Steam Machine there. So we're like, is it going to be? Have they announced it's, it's going to be there? It's supposed to be there. Yep. They announced the uh, the design today, or not today? Uh, Wednesday? Was yeah. They they, uh, they unveiled. Um, it was earlier in the week. They mm-hmm. unveiled the. Was that picture? The, yeah. Mm-hmm. That, oh, was, that, that was that was the actual. Was it. Yeah. I thought it was that's just like. Box. Oh no, yeah. that's what the box looked like. That's it's, one of the prototypes, though. Oh okay. It's not like the definitive what it's going to look like. It's, it's a just prototype. one of several. Because they it announced. Looks cool. That, yeah, they announced that they're going to send out 300 prototypes to beta users by the end of this year. And it's going to come preloaded with games. One of those announced games was Metro Last Light. And yep. it comes with the new um, Steam prototype controller that doesn't have sticks. It those, has that bad boy. I, 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 oh. look, we, yeah, I know, we talked I know about you. this at length on our previous one, but I still want to try. I I love... If they would send us one, I'd I love, love to try it. And I, and I just trust them. And so, you know what? I'm going to... They're, they're going to be innocent until proven guilty on this. That's okay. how I feel about it. Well, Even though I'm like, what the fuck is that? Right. I, yeah. I think I'm, w- I'm with you here that it looks a little unfamiliar. And everything I've read so far from people who have play mm-hmm. tested with it already have said that you have to do, it's like learning to ride the bike again. Like, it's new and it's different and it's weird, but it's great. But it's going to be very unfamiliar because you have touchable buttons in the yeah. back and everything is clickable surface on the front. Like, I don't, so... I don't know personally as a gamer how excited I am about relearning that though. The biggest learning yeah. curve to me looked like having to swipe, like to to move is mm. like instead of like. But the idea is it's yeah. more like a mouse, right? Yeah, yeah it's more like a mouse. Stick. But then like to you know to do three sixty you got to go swipe 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 you know to get all the way around. That just feels weird to me. But you know. I guess I'm already I'm already used but you're to like doing that on the PC with, anyway. With a, yeah, that's like not mm-hmm. weird for me. Well, but if you put it in your hands and you have to do it with your thumb, we'll right? See, but you're doing we'll it with a different it. with a different motion. Like on yeah. a PC, like you have a lot more control with like a mouse. Yeah, it's your but arm. But those, like, I mean, I I know what you're saying. I think it's hard for us maybe to wrap our head around because we haven't gotten to try it yet. That's but, true too. You know, we'll this see. Is, I, I'm, I'm just assuming, going off of like video. Demos, well, and I'm assuming yeah. because of the way it's it's not uh, like a LCD screen. Like it's not like a, it's not going to be like the touch screen swiping, right? I, no, no, no. It's know. a it's <clears throat> it's like track. It's trackpads. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just, so. again, I love Valve. We'll see what happens. Them. You know. Well, send us it was one. We'll totally did, try it. Did you guys see the the part kind of wedged into all this news that was like Half-Life 3 is not going to be a SteamOS exclusive? Yeah. yeah. I that, just, that spoiled my prediction because I thought they might do a timed exclusive to get people to No, but they were they're saying, yeah. they, they said there, there is not going to be, there aren't going to be any exclusives yeah. for SteamOS because that goes against what the, 
Steve OS is supposed to be good guy Valve. That's good for them. Yeah. Is. It is. It is good for them. We also just recently hit our 10 years on Steam Woo. badges, so we're, oh, nice. we're pretty high. We got our little 10. Li- I've only been on Steam minutes. for about three years now. Yeah. Don't give me Nerd. that look. Nerd. Whatever. We were playing Steam when nothing worked. That's. I'm not, I have nothing to <laughs> and everyone Steam. Ha- just, And everyone hated it. I'm, yeah. just a, I'm more of a console gamer. I prefer the simplicity. I don't need to, like, I don't enjoy having to go in and do all the configurations that a lot of PC gamers really, like, Which lust after. They are, they are, like, with the NVIDIA's, I forget what they call it, but that program where it's supposed to kind of D- just configure it for, it for you and sort of give you the optimal settings more thoroughly than just what it does normally. But that's what I'm excited for this potential Steam controller is because I'm, like, a, a PC master racer, but I always see Schroeder on the couch looking so comfy in it his is chair. So comfy. And I have, like, uh, granted, it's not even a computer chair. It's, like, one of our dining room chairs that I just play on. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so uncomfortable for long periods of time. And Schroeder's like, oh, I'm so comfortable. Let me just, I'm like, oh, even more comfortable. Oh, extended play now, on the couch, oh, wow. I, like, ha- I get into the weirdest position on the couch where I'm, like, playing with my controller, like, half <laughs> sleeping. It's the best. I know. And, and if I have, like, my PC, but I have that controller, I might be able to... Go yeah. to the room too, finally, and, and join the. What I want to do is I'm going to install SteamOS, I think, on my on my little computer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My uh, X51, so that we can just fit under the TV and and just do big picture a, mode. Yeah, have a little Steam box. But the thing that I think a lot of people aren't talking about with SteamOS and Steam Machine is that in order for it to work at the optimal level, you still have to own a gaming PC, mm. and I think that. You're saying just because you have to run programs that are that you need a game PC to do, right? Mm-hmm. And I just think that people are underestimating just how expensive this having the living room experience with a machine is going to be. So I mean, all of the de- there's a lot of confusion and um, mystery, if you will, around the details because Valve is keeping a lot of yeah. it under wraps well, for now. But hopefully. After CES, well, it'll be much more clear, and they'll give some more details and give some announcements and stuff like I mean, that. What I'm hoping is that the SteamOS is just going to optimize uh, so much that we will be able to play with like lower system, spe- system specs so we can get cheaper boxes. I mean, Well, they said that they're working with a variety of do, manufacturers yeah. going to offer a, a whole line of machines mm-hmm. from low-end to high-end, so you yeah. know, consumers can pick whatever is the best fit and best price point for them, which is good. And I'm sure, and it will just because, like, it's like how all the OS is for like the 360 in the consoles. They're just like solely for video gaming, and yeah. so they're able to do a lot more with fewer specs. Yeah, isn't I, I mean I'm hoping that's what's going to happen with the Steam Box. Too, yeah. yeah, so we'll, we'll uh, see. We'll see. It's exciting. What else is going on? Well, um, as we briefly discussed earlier, Schroeder and I, Resolution mm-hmm. Gate is still happening. Yes, Resolution Gate. That's one of our news topics. <laughs> we can jump into the uh, Xbox. Or no, um, Capcom just announced that. Uh, well, what's it? Dead, Dead Rising, Dead Rising three. three. There we are. I was gonna say Wait, Dead is that Island. Gonna be in 720? Yes, they just announced today. Dead Rising three is gonna be upscaled from seven twenty. So, and what is what is happening? Well, and come on, that's next the gen? question I want to ask. Like, this is next gen, and it's it is an exclusive for Xbox One. So I used to that? I used to say that you couldn't tell the difference. Actually, I now can tell the difference <laughs> between 720 and 1080. Between 720 yeah. and 1080. So, yeah. What's, I don't know. What, what, do you, what is your thoughts on okay. Resolution H- Gate? Here's my thoughts on it. Also, when do, when do we start calling it that? Because I like that. That's great. It started, be, it started getting called that after Activision came after forward COD. and said that yeah. Call of Duty Ghosts on Xbox One was going to be 720p up to 1080p, and on yep. PS4 it's going to be 1080p native. native. Yep. So and that's when it became like this big deal. Resolution so games. here's why I think this is all bullshit. First off, the majority of us out there don't have fancy enough televisions to tell the difference between 720 and 1080. You anyway. have a 1080 TV? I have a 720 TV. In my what? <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to have you on. Hey, I have <laughs> years in Steam, 720p screen. Oh, this is. I'm incredible. sorry, I'm not made of money. There's a lot of people out there that are in the same boat as I am, buying mm-hmm. a really high-performing television that runs 1080p and 240 hertz. The optimal performance for next-gen Xbox One and PS4 is still expensive. It's still, like, you know, between $1,500 and $2,000 to get a TV. Black on Friday, Saturday, so Monday's I know, out. I'm w- and so the money. I'm I think several of us are buying over, actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I actually... Yeah. Well, I have... I live with Schroeder, so we have his 1080 screen. My TV is 720. Ah! And, and it's broken. But, and you're me but, shit for it. But we've been using that, and then I have, like, a... I have my giant 120 hertz 1080, 1080. monitor that I play yeah. my games in 3D on. Right. 
So, I mean, all I'm saying is that for the mass consumer, mm -hmm. the difference, the visual fidelity difference Ooh. between 720 up res to 1080 and 1080 native is is really really hard to tell unless you're like I have a trained eye to be able to see the difference and the three of us work in digital video every single day mm -hmm. yeah. so that's why we maybe have an eye more accustomed to seeing the difference between the resolutions however people are put the thing that's pissing me off about this whole thing is that people are putting it onto Microsoft and the Xbox One saying oh well Xbox One just doesn't have the power to run 1080p PlayStation 4 is better it's more powerful and that's not true First off, I talked to Phil Spencer about this yep. exact issue at the Xbox One preview event. He's the head of Microsoft Game Studios. And Ooh. I said, so I said, so what's the deal, Name Phil? Dropping. Yes. <laughs> I was like, why Why is everyone making such a big deal of this? And he said, honestly, like, we are we want people to not focus on this and focus on the games. We aren't. He, he said to me, we didn't want to make a mandatory resolution for developers. He's like, we could have done that. We could have gone to them all and said, every game running on Xbox One must be native 1080p. They could have because the system does that. Forza 5 is running at 1080p 60 frames per second, and it's gorgeous. Like, it looks beautiful. Um, uh, Need for Speed also running at 1080p. And what they what he said is he wanted to leave it up to the developers to decide what was the optimal frame rate and resolution for their individual games and let them decide how they want their game to perform instead of having the platform say, you must perform at this level. Or else. And so I'm thinking, with this announcement <clears throat> with Dead Rising, potentially is because... Not that they're, this is a new development. They probably have known this the whole time. They just haven't said anything yeah, about no, it. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm I, sure it wasn't last minute. They're just like, oh, right. now we got to switch it to 720. Like, I think that what people don't realize that aren't in, aren't in the industry or don't do development is that there's a lot of moving factors when it comes to launching a game with the launch of a console. Mm -hmm. And you can't delay your game if you're slated as a launch title yeah. unless, well, you're, uh, uh, unless you're Sony. Unless you're Sony. You're unless. Infamous, right? Like, so that's a, that's something that nobody's talking about is why were those two games delayed? Watch Dogs, excuse me, was the other one. Infamous was not delayed. Yeah. Um, is like, why were these games delayed? Like, what was what was the reason for delaying them so close to launch? Mm -hmm. And I think that if it means getting a really great game out on time and giving the consumer a really fun gameplay experience that isn't going to marginalize the way the game looks, what's the big deal? I really don't understand. I know a lot of tech heads out there are like, but it's, it's a huge difference, man. And then PC players will be like, we're always on 1080p on PC. <laughs> oh, Master Race. And, I, and I'm like, that's fine. And, you know, like, but for a console experience, I, I think there's such a minimal difference between the two. And remember, this is this is the launch. Well, yeah, and here's, the I think that's the big thing mission. is that this is the launch, so there's plenty of time for this to be fixed. But in the long run, I mean, we're supposed to have this content or this console for, you know, mm -hmm. probably eight years or six to eight years. Right. It We need to, if the better experience is going to be, you know, on another system, on PS4, mm -hmm. that's always running 1080, you know, people are people going to start gravitating towards that? Because... Yes, right now, not everyone has 1080p TVs, but, like, when they start rolling out with the 4K TVs next year that I'm sure everyone's going to show off at C, you know, CES, like, mm -hmm. people start getting 1080, and where, like, we can't already have, at the beginning, like, a console that's, like, being ha hamstrung. Wait, hold on, though. Remember, do you guys remember what games look like? Uh, the oh, US absolutely. Launch, that's what I'm saying. This is launch. launch. No, that's, that's what I'm saying. This is launch, and we have this fun... Area where we have oh games on PS3 and PS4. Was it like Assassin's yeah, Creed for like the Xbox slightly, and Pixie and Xbox One? Right. Better and it's textures. like and it's even hard to it's even harder to tell because as polygons you know as more polygons um, are added to the screen like the naked eye can't tell as well. So even this generation it looks like less of a difference even though it is much more powerful. Like yeah you can't really tell too much between the the, know, the big thing, the big thing in this gen though is like it's like with um, Dead Rising Three where it's like the graphics themselves might not look that much better, but it's a but giant no, yeah, open the, world. The amount with of like processing, thousands of objects, that. and all this, and AI, all this stuff happening. So right. that's why that's I'm, right. I'm like, I'm a little easier on it than than others. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's only a big deal because people fanboys need to fight over something, and here's a scrap they can fight over. So Exa exactly. Yeah. Having said, I'm not getting the Xbox at launch, <laughs> yeah. but you know, who, in the long run, we'll look back and be like, huh, remember when we even cared about? Mm -hmm. Resolution yeah. gate. Yeah, it's 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 really just stupid, is what is what it is. So um, I'm looking forward to the launch of both consoles. I can't afford to buy both at launch, like most people out there. So mm -hmm. I chose to go with Xbox now, and I'm going to get my PS4 in February when Infamous comes out. So cool. 
Um, but the yeah. thing is, next gen. I really can never afford anything. I just spend it, and then I have to cut because gaming is credit like my cards, life. Right. So I basically, <laughs> I don't even have a credit card. I just spend just it less. and I buy it, and then it's like, okay, I'm just gonna do. I'm gonna, gonna be a dollar millionaire at McDonald's for the next like, two months. <laughs> so I, I give gaming the priority, and everything else then takes yeah. backseat to that. Yep. It's not a smart, you know. Economically speaking, it's not very smart, but it's led to a very fulfilling life for Davis. Well, there we go. That's that's lovely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what else have we got? Um, we right, got some big <coughs> Marvel. We had news. resolution. Yeah, dude, Marvel was just a, it's been crazy. Marvel's all over the place. I it's almost nuts. think that they're too much all over the place. I think this is gonna backfire. Well, on let's them. let's give it a quick overview. That's, like, that's true. It's Marvel teaming up with Netflix. They are gonna be launching four TV shows. Yeah, four you, different TV <laughs> shows that will then come together to it's, form it's, the Defenders. It's starting with Daredevil, then Jessica Jones, then Iron Fist, then, well, I don't know. If this, I know only know that Daredevil's coming first. Yeah, then. Daredevil's coming then Power Man and Iron Fist. Yeah. And Which it's all gonna already change. should just be Heroes for Hire. Like, they don't need to do four. They could have them. Well, I mean, like, I, Luke Cage and Iron Fist, to me nowadays, are sort of just a team. Yes, they're And they've been Heroes for a for while. Yeah. They could be set, but anyways, there's Whatever, they're gonna four do shows, That's fine. and then feeding into a Defenders miniseries. And it's all going to be set in Hell's Kitchen, which I think is kind of cool. Which is like, fun. Yeah. yeah, no, it's it's smart, and they could probably reuse a lot of sets, which is going to mm-hmm. help everybody in the long run. Yeah. My thing is, though, like, so after they do these, their one seasons, because each one has at least a 13-episode commitment. Right. Do they just, do they go back to their single TV shows, or is it, like, one season of each, then this miniseries, then we're out, and then we reevaluate, or, like, And then they're like, ah, oh, and then they'll show up in Avengers 3, you know? I don't <laughs> Do you, I don't. I don't I think there's. That. It's a possibility, I guess. They at best will have like a cameo. They can't. They they can't. They can't be major players in Avengers. In there's well, just too I many. I mean, Luke Cage is better than Hawkeye. <laughs> He's Luke Cage could hold his own. Hawkeye. Hawkeye. Oh my God. We're this. This. This is not a time and a place. I'm. We're gonna. Hawkeye's awesome. Yes, he is awesome. You know why he's awesome? Because he's a fucking human fighting with everybody else. Yes. And he's like, I don't give a fuck. That's why Hawkeye's awesome. Yes. You leave him alone, you bully. Okay, but just saying. Sorry, I Luke just, Cage. He can turn his skin, you know, rock solid, so... Whatever. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so... Listen, Netflix has a proven track record now with House of Cards yeah. and with Orange is the New Black in doing, and you know... development. Respe- well, I mean, they didn't, they didn't... That didn't start on Netflix. That's true, okay. So, I mean, in doing original programming and in a TV-like style, and I think that Marvel obviously has their own proven track record... And all of the money. But I think that we need to look at the performance of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and go, hey, is this a warning flag? You know, it's not doing so great in the ratings. Fanboys really love it, but the mass audience kind of doesn't get it because maybe some of the references are too I would argue that fanboys don't like it because we are in a sort of a love-hate relationship with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. even though we watch it every week. Yeah. Um, Wait, are the ratings pretty low now? Or I know that it had a really big have, start and it dropped off. They've had severe drop-off, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe if they didn't have Sky as the freaking main character. Yeah, the, they have the, the show. I mean, look, the show has some issues. We watch every week, and it's getting better. Like la- this week's episode, we watched last night, and it like blew us away. It was really, really good. I don't know, yeah. I like but it, this is all like this is also like this is episode six or seven, and mm-hmm. like you've already lost a lot of people. Like, yeah, definitely they've they, had. They kind of need to start actually putting in stop referencing because every episode there's like twelve Avengers reference. You need to start like paying to get an actual star. They had Nick Fury in the second episode. Did you, you watch it at all? Mm-mm. Um, he was in like the post credit scene, which was really awesome. They need to start like actually putting in people. Yeah, to get and making them back. feel connected to the world because right yeah. now they're totally disconnected. <clears throat> Supposedly, um, after Thor comes out, the storyline is going to like follow the aftermath of the Thor movie. So maybe then it'll feel more connected. But right now. I can understand why people have stopped watching, but I think that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is like its own little area because it's on network TV versus this is going to be on Netflix. Yeah. They can sort of, you know, do what they want a bit more. Yeah. Um, well, and by having 13 episode seasons, you can just like, you can just tell more focused, better stories. What I would love to see is, yeah, like Daredevil, you know, saw one big mystery at the beginning that, you know, goes through all the episodes. Yeah, and you don't need, you don't need end, it can you know? be very... Serialized, yeah, mm-hmm. not procedural, and go. and probably they're going to do Netflix let Netflix model of dropping everything at once. So it I, will be. I hope so. So it I will, love no, that model. Do that, and it's a great model. Skippity. And then I think it will be very serialized, and I think that'll make for a better narrative than what Agents of Shield has to do, which is Freak of the Week is Coulson a robot. 
but do you think, ending that. But do you think that they maybe have too many irons in the fire? Look, they've got Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Now they've got this Netflix deal. Thor's coming out. We have Captain America. There's Avengers 2. Like, Guardians of the Galaxy. There could be. Like, that's, a lot, that's like a lot of Marvel stuff happening. But you're, you're asking people that have waited for years? <laughs> I, I thank God every day that Avengers even happen. Like, that to me is... And now that we're getting all these others, I, I'm like that greedy nerd. I'm like, keep just from feeding me. I will, I will consume everything. And I'm like Galactus with that. And... and <laughs> So I am I'm very subjective in this. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just, I'm just asking. I'm just putting it out there as like a hypothetical. Like, do you think this could backfire? On Maybe them? in 2015. With people like, who aren't diehard fans. It could, it could backfire in a couple ways. One, they've been really protective and good, and, and made sure that things are are like pretty set solid. To, like, set even to though, a plan, even the yeah. worst movie of the new Marvel stuff is still pretty good. Mm-hmm. Them just doing all these things, like the overall quality could drop, or people could just be like, I don't care about Marvel anymore. It's too much. That will never be me on either front, yeah. but other people could be that. Mm-hmm. Well, except you don't have control over quality dropping. I do see that. Like, no, but I mean, yeah. like, there's been the like episode two and three of Angel Shields was not good, but I still watch it. So. I know. No, we still we powered through it. Yeah. Sky, she has a boyfriend that's a hacker. The biggest problem is they went, they went so. Is it on ABC? Yeah. They went so it feels like an ABC show. They went very ABC on it. Everyone's too e- young and happy and quirky, and um. I'm like, this is S.H.I.E.L.D. They're dudes in suits that, like, you know, D- kill people by yeah. yeah. Don't mm-hmm. try to make it so happy all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch it all. We'll see how it goes. It's like they sh- they a year from now or whatever. They need to watch a right. season of Torchwood and get in the right mindset because that's yeah. what that show needs to be. Um, wow. So I didn't, I didn't know this until recently, or I guess it came out today. They're pushing Star Wars back to December yep. of... 2015. Yep. Okay. A lot of movies got pushed back. Like many movies. Have well, been you back. saw what summer. Uh, we talked about this when they announced the summer slate for 2015. It was just incredibly crowded. Yeah. Like the most insane summer ever. And I think this summer you're talking about. No, no 2015. Because it was like oh. Star Trek, Avengers, Star Wars, mm-hmm. and then a bunch of other ones. Um, Su- Batman, Superman two. Yeah, which would have right. been yeah. would have been great for like us as viewers, but I think money making wise, they all would have been cannibalizing Each their other. money, and it would have mm-hmm. just like killed everything. So. I mean, that's... It's it, interesting it, that Star Wars, though, is the one that, like, is sort of taking a back seat. I well, find they, they just announced new writers, right? Like, uh... That could be the other issue, is that, yeah, they just... Which makes me really sad. I, I really... Whenever writers leave and new writers come on, I do get a little worried. It was going to be the guy who wrote, like, Toy, Toy Story, Story 3. Right? Yeah. Don't you trust J.J. to do the right thing? Uh-huh. Um, oh, so you guys don't like J.J. Hold on! We, oh, no, no, no. I'm not sure. We have... We have a it's like love-hate a, with J.J. It's a love-hate thing where it's like, J.J. is like what Marvel does, where... He now is involved in like everything. Yeah. And so, and but not everything is super great. I didn't actually. I didn't. You know, I wasn't a huge, huge, huge fan of Into Darkness. Into, no. Um, I thought it was really great. Really? Yeah. I, there were some. Was, there were some great parts. There was some I not liked, so great parts. I like. I mean, Cumberbatch is like just the, fantastic. The last anyways. third of the movie. Yeah, was, and I, I kind of. I was the kind of person. I'm like. I wish Kirk had stayed. I was like, oh my God, kill Kirk, keep him dead so that we can have like an actual interesting timeline. No, bring him back. Day of Six Machina. Um, <clears throat> I loved the first couple seasons of Lost and then stopped watching because mm-hmm. he never answered any questions. He just brought up more questions. I love Fringe. It's like, it's weird where he some things some, I love, yeah. some things I don't love. And I'm, I'm just, his most recent movie I wasn't a fan of, so now I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Mm-hmm. What was the one the alien movie he made uh, with the kids and the? Oh, that was a good movie, Super Eight. That was a great movie. That yeah. was awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was like it, co- it was like a uh, ET for like a generation. I just is it is it Kirkman and Ortsy? Is that who they? I forget who the new writers are. But if it's those guys, if it's the Star Trek writers, but yeah, I'm he has like be, the same I'm kind of writers. A bit, a bit worried. Yeah. So. Well, you guys, I mean, uh, Lucasfilm is still going to be very heavily involved. Yeah. Well, then they sit there having the guy who wrote like Empire and stuff. Yeah. On board to help him. Which I think is awesome too. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, so we'll see. I just it's always when they any, go any, change, any rewrites any change, any change like of the status quo has a, yeah. is like red flags. You well, know, and, and with like the prequels, I think everyone is just on their toes about how the. Uh, how how's my not, voice sound? Not, by the way, it sounds like I'm losing it. Yeah. I've been yeah. tracking a little bit. I've been having a cough and I've been shouting all day filming, so it's, it sounds worse. But yeah, I'm just I'm just I need the burden of proof is on Lucas Films and everybody to like make a good Star Wars movie before I can just relax. But until then, 
anything that happens, any news about Star Wars, I'm just mm-hmm. gonna take it as like a warning sign. Yeah. There we go. Other Disney stuff. More Disney stuff. But more Disney. Disney um, does everything it's now. It's in seven day. Let's talk about Mass Effect. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wait, is it in seven days? It is. Yeah, it is. In my November seven. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> is that actually like a day? Yes. It's a Bioware sponsored day. Mass Effect appreciation. They released a screenshot of what might be coming Mass to Mass Effect. Effect, which was like a shot of their offices. So. They're, they've released a couple really like hard to make out like artist renderings and stuff. Of I'm sure. Working. Give the nerds the the internet, the weekend. Yeah, they and will have it by Monday. They'll have the whole story, the entire <laughs> cast. They'll have decoded the game from the artwork and have a playable copy by Monday. I, this is like when, when Blizzard would put out, I think for like different WoW expansions and everything, they put out images and the, the internet would just solve it. They're just like, and here's the entire story. Here's what you're trying to do. I get mm-hmm. the, and I love, the people that are on the internet are beautiful. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm like, or that's a cool shape. they're fucking awful oh, okay. on the it's, reverse side. Okay, yeah. yeah. People, are, people can be terrible. But the good <laughs> people, those guys are awesome. Yeah, there's, some, there's, some, good, there's a good, some good ones, some mm-hmm. keepers. Yeah. But they, they did say Mass Effect 4 is, just, is a new storyline, right? Like, they're, they're yeah. leaving the first trilogy there alone? There will be no uh, references to Commander Shepard, supposedly. At all? You could make some. Well, just don't maybe. Play it, Sam. I don't know. There's, they left, you know... There's so many endings that were so open and different. You, they what don't know it? what would happen. I thought somebody. <laughs> I thought I heard them talk about this being a prequel. To Why not? What happened in the Commander Shepard storylines? But I don't know. I'm I always really feel like holding on hope that they put out a trailer at the Video Game Awards. I later. always feel that prequel games are like we don't know what to do with the franchise, so let's just make one before to keep selling stuff. Like, but you don't, you don't even need to because I, I never I didn't play Mass Effect three. I didn't finish two. I've got pretty far in it too but what I love is it felt like Star Trek and then it felt like a hugely thought out expansive universe you could tell so many cool stories mm-hmm. Mass Effect was definitely like the big story yeah. that involved everybody but I wouldn't mind like sort of offshoots and more like I don't know what's the word like specific like planet side missions that didn't yeah. go across the galaxy mm-hmm. there's a ton of cool stuff in that universe that I, I would not mind investigating yeah, totally. further mm-hmm. Uh, it's a big, it's a big universe. By where, good job, by where you did a good job making it. Yeah. It's my universe. favorite video game franchise next to Super Mario Brothers. Wow, that, ooh, that's some high praise right there. Mm-hmm. I can't, I can't disagree with it. I, I should beat all the games, but I, I definitely like. I loved it. The music, the location, the mm. amount of like the depth of of storytelling and relationship building, is like big for me. I always get angry at games where, you you do or make decisions that don't really <clears throat> affect anything. Yep. And that game had a lot of decisions that, at least in the parts that I played, I didn't get to the end, so I didn't find <laughs> out that it didn't matter at all. At all. There, there was a lot of decisions that, in the end, didn't matter, but there were some really tough ones. Like I felt like, especially in the third uh, Mass Effect, that there was more like really heavy decisions to make. Yeah. In the first two, the decisions, you felt like they were going to have an impact a bigger impact later, and I know that was one of the criticisms for Mass Effect 3, is that mm-hmm. these decisions that you made in 1 and 2 were kind of built up to be much bigger and more impactful than they ended up being in the final battle yeah. to save mm-hmm. Earth. But I still enjoyed all three of them. Mass Effect 2 was probably my favorite 360 game of the generation. Yeah. Um, and I, I love that series. Look, I don't want to get sappy, but it's not the destination... It's the journey. <laughs> and the decisions... Exactly. No, that's, yeah. that's totally the way I feel about it, too. Yeah, like, I, what, what I loved about any of the Mass Effect games are not their endings. It's, like, it's like the, the, all the, the fucking side missions I got to take to, like, solidify my relationships with these different people on my crew. Wait, who'd you romance? Uh, Jack. In, all, in both of them? In... I didn't play three. Well, you... I don't even know if you can romance her She's in not three. in one. Or, She's yeah. not in one, no. no. Although I saw a picture of her in three, and she got, like... I don't know. She was, like, a tough girl, and I was, like... I don't know what this is about you. I kind of like it. I'm going to romance you. I'm going to hit that. And then Miranda wasn't a big fan of that. Um, <laughs> well, of course not. But, and and I realize that, like, people say the end doesn't do anything at all. But let's all remember, this is a game. And they, at some point, it all has to come back to the, to the, to the, to a very specific ending. So I, I'm going to give, I'm going to cut them slack because you can't have, like, 
90 different endings for every possible choice. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm forgiving of some things. Me too. I'm going to I'm going to laugh when in like a week you're like going to go finish this game and I'm going to hear like a computer monitor get thrown out. No, is I'm like what? Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. I'm a very vocal <laughs> consumer of stuff and I will like I will just scream from my room and they'll be like what happened? I'm like fucking asshole. Is what happened? <laughs> yeah. Dick. Why didn't you finish it? Um I'm also a very... Davis... So here, here's why. Has a, I, I played yeah. the first one and then, like, <clears throat> deleted or got a new computer. And so none of the choices I made in the first game carried over. I played the default choices, which was, like, you let the council die, uh, Rex died. Like, this is this is the default choices. Yeah, the default choices suck. So halfway through the game, I just had it. I, like, I think I even told you. I'm, like, yeah. I'm tired of playing a story where the choices I made... Were, didn't count and so I basically the worst if you're a terrible player that's what Mass Effect 2 default story is if you didn't care about anybody and yeah. didn't put in any work and so I have with you I'm like I'm, I'm just done with a lot of this story and people being angry at me for choices that in my game I didn't play and I wasn't gonna buy the DLC to choose my story <laughs> I'm pretty petty about something so that's that's why I didn't finish 2 it came free with the PS2 version of the game it didn't yep. come free or with the PS2 PS2 version. Yeah. madness version of Mass Effect 2 <laughs> the like $10 Style yeah, I will play again, and I but I have to just like, download, I have, download, I have to download the save the beginning. file. Just download the save file. We'll gift it to you on Steam. I already have it. Oh, I just I have to. Isn't the DLC that gives you the ability to choose the Genesis thing? Isn't Genesis it like comic? it's like a motion comic? Yeah, yeah Genesis. Choose? Yeah. Yeah. So I have to do that because I was I was definitely like, and I'll, I'll be honest, Rex died a couple times, and I had to reload until I got him to survive. <laughs> That's how I am. But but, I, but did you let Ashley kill him? That's the biggest thing. Who? Wait, Ashley? Rex? Yeah, in the first game, Ashley Ashley shoots him. If I thought you have to kill him. It's on like the the beach mission or something? Yeah, it's it's on when you're on Vermeyer. Yeah, I don't I just he lived. Caden? He died, didn't he? Because you could it was him or <laughs> Ashley later on, right? <laughs> because they, one of them Spo- had spoiler for Mass Effect, by the way, <laughs> Mass Effect One. The, this game was forever ago. You cry spoiler. Fuck you. Um so on Vermeer, you have you have to choose to leave Caden or Ashley behind to make yeah, sure yeah, that I love the, the guy clones behind. like get destroyed. Caden, sorry, <laughs> you buy. Actually, such you a bitch something. though. You have to leave her behind. No. Here's, here's, <laughs> no, here's the thing. Here's the thing. She's attractive. <laughs> She's a lady. I remember, I, you te- I remember you telling me about this decision, and it came down to her being attractive. <laughs> yes. But she was racist. But she's hot. So. <laughs> I, it's sure, the, it's hot. the hot, crazy sure, line. Sure, it's not my guy, my go-to. Like, I sit down, I'm like, I did something in a game, <laughs> and here's why I did it. It's not maybe the right decision, but boobs. It came, it came down to a dick or boobs, and boobs will win d- time and time again. Well, this is good to know. I'm going to tuck this away next time we have an argument. <laughs> next time next time it's like you and a dude. Well, Schroeder's exempt from this rule, but you and some guy, it's life or death, I have to choose. Just remind me. I'm like, boobs. <laughs> Sorry, Joven. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Andrea. <laughs> Jesus. I like this. But yeah. All right, we got off topic. Um, it's true. All right, the final news story was, okay, Disney Infinity. Are you an Infinity fan? I am. Good. Nice. Apparently... Disney Infinity Man. single-handedly boosted Disney sales 107 percent. Yeah, this year 400, uh, 400 million dollars. Uh, yeah, the Disney Infinity was responsible for 205 yep. million of it. Yep. Yeah, bam, so, that is a ton of money. So I don't think it's, it's not Skylanders numbers, but it is a huge like that's just a huge one, gain that's for just Disney. Just one Infinity. quarter though. Yeah, yeah that's true. Nine. Skylanders and they did, did just come out. Million yeah. in a year. That is true. They oh, did just okay. come out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty so, good. Yeah. And also, we bought all of them. So, we, you know, we own everyone we contributed. except the D23 exclusive Mickey. Mickey, the Sorcerer Mickey one. I have one for you. Would you like one? Are you well, fucking kidding yes. me? Yes. No, I, ha- I have that at my desk. <laughs> I was thinking about what to do with it. You oh, I'll, I'll give it Are you fucking with me right now? No, are you going to go play so much Disney now? Do you want me to go get it right now? <laughs> Not right now, but <laughs> definitely next. Yeah. Are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. You're like my best friend right now. <laughs> Don't say I never did nothing for you. There if you, you need a DD one night, I'll just call me up. I'll just I'll pick you up and drive you home. Okay. <laughs> That's like the greatest thing that I can give as Davis. I know it sounds weird and random, <laughs> but not drinking to drive somebody else home, that's a big sacrifice for me. That's so true. That I'll do that true. one day for you for Disney for for, for Mickey. Me. Wow! <laughs> so you know, really good. And spoiler, it's not Saturday. It's actually yeah. Thursday night. I'm going to BlizzCon tonight, so I'm like, man! 
He's just feeling good today. Yippity skippity, and um, and the streak is good too. <laughs> it's, it's very good. Indeed. This is good coffee no, today. Disney Infinity got chase my coffee. Is a really fantastic. <laughs> is a really fantastic game. I think that it got um an unfair rap from the gaming community for being a kids game, because there's so many amazing things you can do in the toy. There's so mode. many. There was one night when we uh we were in toy box mode and uh, Jared was over and he was being a dick, so uh, I turned into. We just turned into the sprite, and it was like, oh my god, god! No. It was like God versus like their creation. So I kept on deleting shit while he kept running from me. It was a fun night. We, we of, yeah, there were a bunch of people that came over and who were like, who did not because a lot of people hated it without playing it. Yeah, and that's and the big it, thing is play it. You'll like a lot it. of the mechanics are simple, but it is it's just fun. It's just it's really fun. It's like very simple fun. Yeah, and you can build so, so much. Oh, and he and destroys. So and, and our buddy Jared is even more hardcore than us, and so he. Right, he had like the the Tron. I don't know what they're called, but the little flying tank things. Mm-hmm. And he was just like spawn killing us. And so then Schroeder became yeah, God, and it became this game of like survive God destroying you. And all these mini games popped up, and it became this hilarious event just that everyone night got in. Of and like, fun. Take out that piece. Take out this piece. And it became this huge party game. We're like, see, Disney Infinity is fucking awesome. Imagination, power of imagination. But you can't say fuck because it's Disney. Do you guys <laughs> have a, a power just trading system going? We. Have we a lot system. of power. We just trade him. We haven't traded. We're in a system. Well, we don't have people to trade with. You have you have extra you, power discs. You we know can that trade. There's like websites where you can track your power discs, and they have like specialty cases for your power discs. We do have the special cases we, for the we power discs. <laughs> <laughs> do you have the Dumbo? The the the, the rare no, Dumbo we are, one. No, we do not have Dumbo. There's a Dumbo figure. Yeah, it? it's the there's it a Dumbo flies. cart. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and there's a machine gun. Oh, is it? You can shoot you mean it's like a Dumbo. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we don't I, have, I don't think we have all of we them. Are, all uh, the we are missing we like characters. three. We have missing three from series one. Three discs. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But, um. I fucking love that game. It's so much fun. Yeah, and so good good job. Good job saving Disney Interactive from becoming cell phone only. So. Well, they, like, their other, their other games are pretty shitty. The best Disney mm-hmm. games were on the Genesis. That's true. And that's. It's a hell of years ago. To hell of years August. ago. <laughs> it, they're like 20 years ago. So, yeah. Um, I mean, HD remakes would not be bad. Yeah, well, I mean, they did DuckTales and Castle. But no, I'm excited because yeah. they, they're saying that, like, what, all the new movies will get, or at least the big movies will get their own play sets, and that's yeah. how they're going to do Disney And that's great. Going forward, you know? Cool. I am a fan of that. They're not so. even that expensive, too. So what no. play set do you want to see? I haven't bought the toys. We haven't bought the Toy Story one yet because we consider that series two. Yeah, not, it came not, out. Not one that's out like Dream Toy Set. Like if you got to pick your favorite uh, offset, what would a, Mar- it be? a Marvel one. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, Marvel and like Star, and Wars, Star Wars. Those are ones I really want a Tron one. I think they're That'd teasing it. They definitely have been Tron elements. Tron, yeah. Um, I just think I would love a Star Wars one. That would be really fun. They like always have Star Wars jokes like in the game and stuff because they they're have like Star Wars oh. jokes. Do you watch Once Upon? Does anyone watch Once Upon a Time? I want to get into that show. I watched Once Upon a Time, yeah. and I thought it was a girl show, and I watched it with my sister, and then I'm like, this is Disney. Oh, shit. I'm, I'm, in, I'm hooked. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> not long after it's they, they announced that, like, they were buying Star Wars, one of the characters had the Imperial March, um, <laughs> like, Ringer? Self, like, Ringer I think I remember that, episode. yeah. And for someone like me, that's enough to just make me freak out. So, <laughs> but, yeah, no, I want, I, they so easily could. And People would buy it. People, People would so buy it. If they did a Marvel one, they would like you could fit so many figures on that playset. People would go nuts over that. Yeah. So And there's already they have like that superhero squad show, which is yeah. like already kitty. There's already like a, a kid. I just want to see, I wanna see their character that. design. I love the like unified design that they've done with everyone. So. Oh, their their Disney Infinity style. Yeah, yeah. no, it's great. Mm-hmm. I I have several figures because we have doubles now, just on my desk. Yeah. Along with my many other figures. Mm-hmm. Because they just they're just they look good. They yeah. do. And, um, yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't think the Skylanders figures look all that cool. They're also not characters that I have any emotional, emotional attachment yeah. to, but mm-hmm. they also just, like, they just look kind of, like, generic figures that you would find uh, that you're... I'm going to disagree with you there. I agree that there's that childhood nostalgia love that we all have with the Disney Infinity characters because it's Disney, and yeah. we all grew up with Disney, but I will say that Skylanders characters are super unique, and they're really creative. And they have the, a lot the, of them. The Toys for Bob team did a really great job with them. I, I wouldn't, I mean, the numbers suggest that you're probably in the minority. <laughs> of, of, of people who who like or dislike Skylanders figures. Hold on. They're, you know, what about kids here? Kids are, like, insane. If you want to canvas <laughs> the entire world population, I bet you I'm in the majority of people who are like, eh, 
Hey, that looks like Buzz Lightyear versus. But kids are it's a kids are fucking great at squeezing money out of their parents. parents. Yeah. We all did it. Yeah. So did I. But <laughs> I had the things that I squeezed them out for were, were were legitimately good. The cartoons were best. Our age, everything was best in my childhood. That's how I defend it. Oh, you're like, such a Gen Oneer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tear you. I am. A, I am a proud Gen Oneer. Yep. So. Even though we love Pokemon X and Y, it's good. Anyway. Right. Oh, well, cool. That's about it. I guess you gotta you gotta hop, you gotta bounce, you gotta jump. Yeah. Yep. So I guess we'll just we'll just end it there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Right. Cool. cool, Internet, cool. Thanks for coming on again yeah. this time Thank you. with actual audio recording and yeah. a third mic too. I believe that those yes, are the only two. in that. So uh, um, where can we? Where can the people at home find oh, you? Yeah. Hawk all your stuff. Yeah, so you can follow me on Twitter at Andrea Renee. You can subscribe to The Escapist. It's youtube.com slash The Escapist Magazine, which I'm sure they're going to annotate to on screen. You can see my uh, show there. I know you have it'll, a foil. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll info box link. <laughs> info box link. I don't know if we've learned how to annotate yet. I can show what? you. I will learned how to annotate. <laughs> that was my cop out. Fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, that's um, follow me on Twitter. Watch uh, my YouTube videos. Thank you for having me on. It was fun. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah. We'll have to do this again sometime. Maybe yeah. I can make an appearance in one of your fancy sketch videos. Ooh. Or a drinking game or something. Drinking game for gamers! Yes. Let's do it. Fuck yeah. Well, hey. Hey, cheers. Thanks. Speaking of. Cheers. And, uh. Cheers to you. Yeah, we'll see you guys next week if I survive BlizzCon. Bye. Bye.